JV basketball action for you tonight from the Dean Holt Memorial Gym. We have the Virgin squad. Virgin's in the dark blue uniforms and the Mill River JV squad in their home whites. And we'll have to get to know this team all over again. A bunch of new players on this year's JV squad. And they'll be knocked out of bounds. And I'll read the rosters throughout each timeout. And, uh, for both sides, and we'll get into it, and we'll let everybody know. I can tell you that's Dan Brackett's number 11. Casey Dan Brackett's bringing the ball out of bounds. And again, this is the uh, prelude to the varsity game. I'll have the varsity game for you at a later date. That's not a bad court. She's okay. Yeah. That's Lee with the basketball. And good basketball player, good soccer player, good softball player, good athletes. This should be a good game right here because both squads very athletic. That's Bennick with the basketball, number 32, and she's one of the captains. For Mill River, and that'll go off from the foot and out of bounds of Mill River player number 34. I don't, I'll find it. This is the first time we get to see this new group play, and that's Caitlin Hardigan that the ball went off from out of bounds. And I'll check on my pronunciations too as I get through the season. The more games I do, the more fluid I'll become because I'll get to know the young ladies' names. Number Jens with their first offensive possession. And again, it's just like regular old varsity basketball. It's just, we play four quarters, there's a blocking fall called. Down inside on number 44, Abdelnauer. And no shots. Okay, so we'll go to the far corner of the gym. That's the first foul of the contest. First personal foul, obviously, on Abdelnauer. And they'll bring the ball in, and boy, they had a good spot to shoot from. They looked to bring the ball back out for the pass, and that's going to be up and in. Oh, that's going to be Jen Cohen, one of the captains for Virgens with the basket. And there you go to a press after the made bucket. Now give it off to Lee. She came down the sideline, got to the elbow, and she'll swing the basketball out to Dan Brackus to go down inside. Boy, Abdelnauer, nice kick out, and Lee, a little strong and long, and a rebound will be taken out by Virgins, and that's going to be Cohen that had the ball on the rebound, and she outletted it to the point guard, and there's a long pass down inside. That might have been partially blocked, actually. I do believe one of the Mill River defenders got a piece of it, so Lee will turn into a double team, and she looks for help, finds help. That's Hardigan, number 34. And that's a nice catch on the sideline by Dan Brackis. They'll save the basketball, and Bennett had it, lost it, and a travel called. Yeah, that travel will be on Cohen. Jen Cohen, one of the captains for Virgins, called for the travel. And we'll have Dan Brackis take the basketball out of bounds, bring it into Bennett, and Bennett will just swing it over to the elbow and bring it to Lee. 2 nothing for Jen, 6.31 to go in the first quarter of play. JV basketball, first JV game of the season for me here at Mill River. Like I said, a bunch of new faces out there, so I just got to learn them. Lee, little problem with the dribble. Her pass came back. It's picked off, and Cohen has it stolen back by Bennick, and Bennick will lose her footing, and I don't believe there's a foul on the play. She just turned the corner tight, and her feet kicked out and became a travel. And it should be blue basketball, and that's what's going to have taken out of bounds will be Liz Paquette, and Liz Paquette is one of the captains. There's three captains on the Bridgen squad, and that's Pocket's one of them, already named Cohen. And might as well go for the last one, Van Wysick. Or Van Wick, I'm sorry. Van Wick is the third captain for Virgins. And Mill River coming out, looks like a zone defense. Hard to identify. Uh, it's a 3-2 zone. Actually, it's a 2-3 zone the way they're playing. They got the trap in the corner and a jump ball called. Oh, that was well executed. They went right into the teeth of the trap and forced the whistle. And the possession was going to favor Virgins. In case you're just joining us, there's 5.54 to go in this first quarter of play in JV action from the Dean Holt Memorial Gym in North Clarion, Vermont, USA, home to the Mill River Minutemen. 2 0 for Jens with the score. Blocked right there. Oh, it was a big time block. And then the ball up over the top. Bennett looking for some numbers and good transitional defense. Cohen got back and took away any chance for an easy layup. That was Abdelnauer that made the block down this end. And I do hope I'm saying her name right. If I'm not, I apologize and I will learn it if it's not correct. And and it was knocked out of bounds by Cohen. Pretty good pace for the first two and a half minutes of the first home game of the year for these JV squads. Bennick will have the basketball. And go to Lee on the far side. And Lee wants to go down along the baseline. And she's sealed off down there. They'll kick it back up top. Bennick for a three ball off the front of the rim. Long rebound. It's going to go out of bounds. It'll be blue basketball. So for Jens, we'll take it over. And they'll send Paquette out of bounds. And... They've been bringing the ball into Higby, number 25. They will bring it up. So Higby will be the point guard at this point of the ball game. Lee will pick her up right at the midcourt logo. And boy, nice steal. Knocked away. See if they got the speed to get past the defender. Up and Lee will get the bucket. Will be tied at two. Oh, they were shoulder to shoulder. And Lee 
pretty long and gangly. She was able to use her height to get the rebound up and over, and Higby put the brakes on. I mean, she had some good tires there. She put the brakes on, it didn't slide at all. Cohen will spin below the free throw line, take it to the hole, got fouled. She's going to the line, and she should be shooting two. And Abdelauer will be called for the foul. That's her second personal foul, and Cohen, the, Cohen going to the line, and I believe this is the first opportunity for shots tonight. But again, I will tell you, you're watching Peg TV, Channel 15 Sports, Munger Bridge and bringing this JV game, and Peg TV's website is an easy one to remember. It's www.pegtv.com. Their phone number is 747-0151. They're located at Building 24 in the House Center. And Tom Lapel, the uh, program director at Channel 15, always wants me to remind you on Saturday afternoons at 4 o'clock, he starts airing the sports of the week, games of the week, all the sports that was submitted for the week. And you can see them at other times also, but Saturdays at 4, you can get yourself a bowl of ice cream and something to drink and settle down in front of Channel 15 on the tube and watch local sports all day and all night. It's good stuff. This is going to be Dan Brackett's little, little juice on it, a little long. Tied up, and it's going to be Hardigan tying up Flynn. And Hardigan, Caitlin Hardigan is number 34 for Mill River. And Dan Brackett's will bring the ball out of bounds for the Minutemen. Nice catch, kind of. They got it. They got it. It was just a little different drawn up. Dan Brackett's turns wheeled. Ball loose, still loose. Picked up by Higby. Higby, long outlet pass for Cohen. Might be a little bit too long. She didn't save it. Oh, she must have just had a toenail on the line. It was close. It'll be called out of play, and we'll have Dan Brackett's in the backcourt. Virgins, as they've done for the first three and a half minutes here of this opening quarter, will go to a full court press. And it's been a 50-50 deal. It's, it's been effective at times, and Mill River at times has done a good job. That wasn't one of them right there, and that's going to turn into two points. Six to two for Jens, and yeah, they're going to have to call. Well, I don't know if they have to call a timeout, but they're going to have to... Uh, Work on setting some screens to get the guard open on that press and shorten up their passing lane. And boy, jump ball call. Yep, they were able to tie up number 24, Haley Katrupi. And that's going to be our first time out taken just about the midway point, 404 to go to be exact. And we'll take a look over at the Mill River huddle. And you know, it's awful. I know who that coach is because he helped out on varsity last year at my age. I just forgot his name. I'll have to look it up. And I do apologize for that. It's kind of embarrassing. Shane Little. I apologize for that, Shane, but when you get to be my age, you can forget a couple things, too. <laughs> but JV-wise, it's a big roster. Number 10 is Katie Messer. Casey Dambrakis is 11. Captain number 12, Amanda Lee. Allison Burden is 14. Kylie Peterson is 15. Marissa Fitzgerald, 20. Melissa Mangan is number 21. Or Mangan, I'm sorry, 21. Taryn Redenis is 23. Haley Katsuki, 24. Captain Brandy Bennett, 32. Madeline Pritchard's 33, Caitlin Hardigan 34, and Lauren Abdelnauer is number 44. So I think we survived that first reading of the roster. It's always tough. Don't forget, you're not dealing with a 100 watt light bulb here, so just bear with me. We'll get through this game together. I promise by the second JV game, I'll, I'll have them down. It's just a lot of new names and faces to memorize. And, it's six to two, Virgins with the lead. Virgins in the blue uniforms. They've got the ball, they got the lead. 351 to go in the first quarter. They've done it mostly with good defense, transitional defense off steals. Higby gave the ball back. They're gonna have a nice save. It's the middle line that would have been a backcourt and it didn't quite make it there. That's gonna come down and oh, good job of grabbing the basketball. Inside, up, and too strong. They got the ball down on the sweet spots and look at the job of just weaving through the uh, Defense and then they give back and that was Katrupi coming down. Oh, the putback, no whistle on the plate, even though there was contact. That was Pritchard 33. They got the ball, put it back up and in towards the basket. Katrupi brought the ball down and was just, I hope she used direction lights. She was weaving in and out of traffic like you wouldn't believe down there. That's Dan Brandt, yes. Her name I got down, her brother played. And uh, that's a little bit off. And her mom's sitting about 10 feet to my left. and. She doesn't let me forget their names, so that's good. And ripped out of there, yes, Hardigan able to get the rebound muscle back to Lee, and there's oh, Cohen Quick, hands able to get the steal and control the basketball. Higby wants to wheel to the hole, takes the drive off the glass, no good, rebound, long rebound came back, and boy, a lot of contact, no whistle, fight for it along the baseline, people crash into the floor, jump ball call. This is JV basketball action, this is why I love to do it, it's usually just hectic and chaotic, and you can't beat it. 
A lot of attitude on the floor. A lot of effort. 6-2 for Jens, 2.53 to go. Dan Brackis looking, oh, that should be a defensive. Oh, man. They put the whistles away on everything, I guess. We're going to have a quick JV game tonight. <laughs> now, we're waving a shot, three seconds called. Somebody get the fire hose out. There you go. See, they're running a stack, but they're not setting the screen. They're just breaking off the stack, and somewhere you've got to have a pick or a screen. And Katrupi passed to herself, and they let it go, and well, she got some heavy traffic, ball on the floor, jump ball. And the arrow's gonna go to for Jens. And I believe it's the Commodores. I should know that by now. But again, not a 100 watt light bulb, don't forget. Jerry Munger, 12th season covering sports. Not 12 seasons at Mill River, no, no. Quite a few, but not 12. Started in November 95, and it's a job you can't get fired from because you're a volunteer. Thank goodness for me, you can't get fired. Oh, nice offensive rebound. I'll come back to Higby. She'll bring it back. And Cohen off the front of the rim. That ball's hot potato. It's going to be white basketball on the tie-up. That was Hardigan that tied it up, and it'll be out of bounds. And again, Mill River's going to have to come up with a way to get some people open on these press plays. And number 15 coming in for Mill River, Kylie Peterson. So Peterson in the basketball game, and I know we've got another new number. I'm looking. Oh, it's Burden now. It's in Burden number 14. She's got the basketball, and she's looking to get it in bounds. And but she's looking for Peterson, and Peterson will go to the far side, save it, throw the top of the trap, get it to Leach traveled. Yeah, she turned around, and the defender was staring right at her freckles on her face. That's how close she was, and forced to travel. But again, it's just it's more of a wide, wide open offense. There's no screens being set right now, or picks. And they'll work on it. They'll work on it. And ball knocked away and retrieved, recovered. There's a great explosive first step. And Lee will get the steal this time. And she went through a triple team, got tripped up, got a foul called on the arm. And that's going to be the first foul called on Virgins. Just two on Mill River. Not a lot of whistles. It's been a pretty wide open JV, JV style ball game right here. And ball will be taken out on the side. I believe that's Burden again, number 14. Yeah, it is. Allison Burden brings it in. Kachupi, Kachupi. Remember, she played varsity uh, soccer, and Lee will make the catch. She played varsity soccer also, but again, they got some awful wide spacing. They're making longer passes with those wider spaces, which means it's easier for the defense to roll in there. And Lee will go back and pick up the basketball and get the ball off on the elbow. They want to go down inside. Peterson turn, and boy, that for Jen's defense is reacting beautiful. Bucket for Burden. Three-pointer nonetheless makes it 6-5. For Jen's lead's been cut down to one. And, well, a very soft press. A lot of people up above the free throw line. And there's the steal by Burden. So she's got a three point shot and she's got a steal. And could you be. <laughs> she's got her under control finally. Oh, she's going to be fun to watch, Kachupi. So with a minute one to go in the first quarter, yeah, already a minute one left. That's how fast this first quarter's gone by. Higby will bring the basketball up. And I think she's locked a lot of minutes. She's handled the ball well. That's Kachupi on her defense. They want to lob it down in the corner and just too far. Just a bit too far. She's looking for Paquette down there and just overthrew and the ball will go out of bounds and it'll be Mill River's JV squad with the basketball. See again, everybody's just running one-on-one -on -one against their defender. And they're going to have to come up with, a, with some kind of stack and screen to come off, slide off a pick so that they can pop open. But I really shouldn't coach from up here. I'd say I get in trouble doing that. Stapleford bringing the ball out of bounds. Number 20. And boy, on a drive, they knocked it away. And here comes Kachupi. Kachupi lays the pass out ahead. Beautiful pass to Bird. And they got it. What a pass from Kachupi to Bird. What an assist. 7 6 Mill River takes the lead. Boy, Higby, that was awesome. She lost her headband, picked it up with the dribble, still going, and then put her headband on with the dribble still going. That was one of the most athletic moves I've ever seen in my life. On the steal, here comes Virgens. Oh, this is going to be a nail biter. It's 7-6 right now with 17 seconds to go in the first quarter. And I'm telling you, this is going to be a fun ball game. Down inside block. I mean block. I mean big time block. That was Pritchard, Madeline Pritchard with the block. And what she did so well there is she didn't leave her feet and she didn't lean in. Four seconds, plenty of time to make the catch and the shot. 
Oh, they made one too many passes. Yeah, one too many passes. Mill River with a little rally toward the end comes back to take a 7 6 lead going into the second quarter play on JV basketball action. Stapleford will be taking the ball out of bounds. It'll be obviously for Jen's basketball to start the second quarter play. They had a 6 2 lead, and then Mill River went on a 5 0 run. Mill River up 5 to nothing right now. And you know, the Jens again did a lot of stuff well defensively. And then toward the end of that quarter, they turned the ball over quite a bit, and that's going to be Stapleford hard off the glass. Had a good look on the blocks down low and just put too much juice behind the ball, go out of bounds. We'll have Higby take the ball out of bounds, number 25, and they're going to set the box formation. Leave the shot wide like this so you can watch it spread. There's the screen. Got, and it comes open, free throw line. Yes! Up it in. There it is. Well, I'll have to get the number again because what people hollered out for a cheer it didn't match the name on the roster. And Benick with the basketball back in the basketball game for Mill River. Got it down to Pritchard over to Peterson to the bucket. Yes! Great passing right there. Nine to eight now, Mill River with the lead as the seesaw is back and forth here in the opening half of play. Higby killed the dribble and boy made a long pass and got it there. And it's going to be out of bounds. Yeah, it'll be out for Mill River out of bounds. Paquette, number five over there, and she's going to come out of the basketball game, and she takes the basketball with her and will hand it off to Cohen. And the ref, see, he wanted it all the time. <laughs> he just walked off with the ball. Oh, you got to love it. That's in JV ball games. They're so entertaining. That's why I cut people go, you cover JV ball? I'm like, absolutely. Oh, what a save by Stapleford. It comes back in out of Katrupi, and she got held on. Oh, she traveled. Oh, 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 Moose. I'm not sure about that one. Oh, she got a pretty good hold on her, which might have led to her travel, but you can't change it now. And here comes Higby with the basketball. Well, she was dancing near that midcourt stripe a little bit too tight. And they'll dump it down inside. They went to the post position. This hasn't really been a big factor here. They've been bombing from the outside like we just saw there. And they go back. A block again. Pritchard with another block. That's two great blocks tonight by Pritchard. And here they come. Burden. She shall take it all the way in. She'll go up with the left hand and didn't happen. Great job, though, taking a right center layup like that right at the hole. Not coming in from the right or left side. Toughest layup to make. They get it down the floor, and they're looking for the trailer on the play, and it's going to be Stapleford, and she might have took steps. Yeah. So Stapleford called for the travel, and the ball will go back to Mill River. They'll have it all bounds right in front of their own bench, and they'll be Burden taking it out. And she'll have Kachupi in the backcourt. No press this time in the backcourt. We'll have Virgens pick up just over midcourt, and it's going to be Higby to get there, and Benick with the basketball. Six minutes to go in the second quarter, nine to eight Mill River. Peterson with the toss, they kicked it out to Pritchard, they'll swing up from Petrupi back around to Burton, she'll fire away that left-hander, long rebound chased down by Stapleford, and her pass is a good lead pass, but unfortunately no teammates broke free, and it'll just pick, be picked up by Burden of Mill River, goes to Kachupi. there's a little kick off to Benick, and missed it. Well, they, again, they found the open person, Burden, got it off the glass, and oh, she's got a nut. I think she's a lefty. She's got a good release, the wrist snap forward. That makes it 11 to eight, Mill River. That becomes their largest lead of the contest. Oh, we got new people. I'm just getting used to the old people. Okay, so let me figure out who's who here. Somebody's gotta take the ball out of bounds, okay. So Taryn Redenis is 23, she's out there. Abdelnauer is back out to number 44. And I believe that were the only two changes. And Abdelnauer knocked it away, couldn't control it. Ball will come back along the baseline. They line it up and drain it. That's Van White right there with the bucket. She was the third captain for Bridgens. Makes it 11 to 10 now. Mill River up by one. Redenis with the basketball. Redenis will go back to Bennett and they'll. Trying to identify the defense because it looks up, at times it looks like a zone and at times it looks like a man to man. And it's going to be tipped and Bannock will lose it and regain it twice. She lost it twice, regained it twice. So basically that was a washout. And that long pass coming back by Kachupi was picked off and by Cohen. Cohen going baseline. And oh my goodness. Kachupi went airport. And she's okay. Well, you know. There was no directional light, no brake lights came on, and she didn't know she was going to put the stop down like that. 
Okay, so Kachupi coming out and Amanda Lee back in the basketball game number 12 for Mill River. Oh, one pass too many. Yeah, Higby was open for the first time and what a shot right there by Cohen. Puts Virgens up at 12-11 now. Again, each team's had to lead a couple different times and Benick with the ball now and she'll cross the timeline and Benick goes down to Abdelnauer and a little strong, a little juice, a little jack. She rushed it, she knows it. Offensive rebound came back to Mill River and they recycled Peterson on the curl, got called for a travel. Huh. Delisle with the basketball, she'll take it out of bounds, bring it into Higby. We haven't seen a lot of presses from Mill River, but we've seen a lot of different, two or three different looks now from Bridgen's on presses. Cohen came across. That's going to be up, and no, but good look didn't happen. Rebound will come down to Bennett, and she wanted to break out of the pack and stole in the way, and who touched it last? Went out from Flynn last of Regenz out of bounds. So Redenis will bring it into play for Mill River, and she got into Lee, and, and Lee has traveled, yeah. She's had a little problem matching up with number 10 out there, Cohen. Early season action, they'll, they'll get it together. Both teams will, and that's the whole key to it. Just work hard through the season, practice, and by the end of the year, all improved. It was deflected from Lee to Cohen. Ball goes along the baseline, and ball, oh, oh, oh. He called Abdelnauer for the blocking foul along the baseline, and that'll be her third personal foul. And we still have 347 to go in the first half of play. And then he called shots, wow. Okay. I'll try to behave tonight. This is Van White at the line, and she will get it. Well, good looking shot. 13 11, lead goes to two for Virgins, and coming in for Abdelnauer will be number 33 Pritchard. So, Madeline Pritchard in there with a couple blocks already comes back in, and I don't think we'll see Abdelnauer probably now the rest of this first half with those three falls and only 3.47 to go. I'll tell you what, nice looking form, free throw wise by Van White. But Dennis into Bennett being guarded by, well, three different Commodores actually. For Jen's out there, and that's Cohen, and she's able to get the pass up to Bennett. She'll find Pritchard. She brought the ball down. Yeah, boy, she almost, yeah, she did get in trouble. Once, once the taller player brings that ball down, that's a killer. You got to catch it, keep it up high. 3:32 to go. 14-11 for Jen's second quarter action, and it's going to be blue basketball. Yeah, that's what I thought. Also, so Delisle will bring it in. And Higby, who's done a nice job of running the point, put a lot of minutes in so far. Still looks pretty fresh out there. We'll bring it up to Flynn. Flynn will bring it on his side. And Cohen catches fires and overshot the bucket ball, tipped around, and come down to Van White. She'll get into a double team and realize it, dish it back out. And Delisle off the mark. Rebound came off the front of the rim. We'll go to Bennick, and it should be, oh, oh. Slapped out of bounds by Cohen. I'll tell you, without a lot of fouls called, not a lot of timeouts being wasted here, we're already just Tape-wise, just zooming along, hardly used any, any tape tonight. Flynn had a block by Pritchard. Pritchard with three blocks. She said, get out of my house. Oh, Pritchard's on, you know, just a wall down there. They can't get a shot up over her. And got a hold call. That's going to be the second fall on for Jens as a team. Ball will just go out of bounds on the baseline to Mill River. Where Dennis will take it out of bounds. There's a sub going to be coming in. It's Marissa Fitzgerald. Now, I got to see Marissa play a lot at West Rutland JV basketball level, and here she is. She must have gotten a better contract offer or traded. She's at Mill River. And of course, I'm just joking. I'm assuming she lived in the, she might have moved or lived in the area, but no, I watched her play for West Rutland last year. Now, there she is. Number 20 coming in is Fitzgerald. She'll replace Peterson, and Redennis will take the ball out of bounds. And we're just a tick under three minutes left to go here in this first quarter of play. Benick, long distance, and Fitzgerald trying to keep it alive. Flynn came out of the pack with it. She'll bring it off to Higby, and that's how they're going to end up with it because not only was Higby there, well, that's a tough pass to complete, but Paquette was also in the area. And Lee came through the middle of the floor and just forgot the basketball. And Cohen up and going to have a fall. Pritchard got ball, but she got her on the arm too, and that'll be a fall on Pritchard, and there'll be shots coming up for Cohen. And Captain Jen Cohen going to the line. She should be getting two here, even though that's only the sixth team foul. She was fouled, obviously, in the act of shooting, so. 
So she'll settle it in here. And Again, Virginia's jumped out to a 6-2 lead. We're ready to come back and take a 7-6 lead. And from that point on, pretty much it's gone back and forth. That now becomes a 15-11 lead for Virginia's. And Burden 14, then brackets number 11, both coming in for Mill River on the substitution. So at least it's Gerald 20, Pritchard 33. I already mentioned Jim Brackus and Burden. And Redennis, of course, out there is 23. That's the five on the floor for the Minutemen, and that's going to be good. Both shots good. But I tell you, Cohen's slick enough to be a uh, varsity player. I wonder if she splits her time. Redennis came back to meet the pass, cuts it inside, had the ball tipped right back to her. Gets the pass up ahead to Dan Brackus, and oh man, big collision. Missed it, but you could hear the thumping. Blocking foul will be on Cohen. Redennis getting up. She landed on her. Can I see her shoulder? She didn't land in a nice position where she could catch herself. She went feet overhead, and she's going to stay. Oh, she's still flexing it. She's going to stay in there, though. Those Redennises are tough. That's Taryn, and then, of course, just Chelsea Redennis. There's probably more than that, but there's only two I know. Pritchard turns, fires. Oh, she didn't get it, but what a nice, strong, confident move to the bucket by Pritchard. I hope they give her the ball down there again during the contest. I think that's a good go-to option right there. A lot of moves, and they'll kick it out on the wing. They want to bring the pass back, and Higby, the pocket, they'll lob it inside to Flynn, and Tell you, they're a nice job of moving the ball around. Got it inside, and oh, who made the block? That was Fitzgerald with the block. Got it to Pritchard. Now they'll give it to Redennis. I think as a team, that's five blocks for Mill River. They've got three pretty good high, uh, high, high players, tall players down there. Ball will go out of bounds, stays with, well, it goes to Mill River. Dan Brackis down there, number 11. She's going to set the play up. 149 to go before halftime. JV basketball, Munger Vision, Peg TV, nice warm gym. Old Burden pulled it down, got to the free throw line, gave it back. With Dennis, Fitzgerald, oh, set on the rim for Fitzgerald. She's got it again up, and well, she might have rushed it. It's going to be interesting. I think it went out from a sneaker of a Virgin's player, and it did. So we'll have Dan Brackis take the ball out of bounds on the baseline, and she's going to call the play out. They're in a box formation. They set the screen up top. They wait for Burden to pop open. She didn't. Pritchard comes off. Hey, got it. Oh, I like Pritchard. She looked like a left-hander on that shot, too. 16-13, 126 to go, second quarter. And for Jens with the lead, they've got the ball, and you are watching local sports action on public access television. And Stapleford killed the dribble and got the ball up to Higby. Higby passed up the shot. Well, she's had a lot of penetration and then hasn't taken a shot. She's got to realize when you get that deep down inside, you, you've got to become the scorer. Again, nice, short, tight passing game. There she is off the mark. Flynn had it lost. It goes out of bounds. And with 58 seconds to go, it'll be Mill River basketball. And they'll be looking at that press again. And Dan Brackis will come back, and it's going to be caught by Burden. And now she'll dribble out of a triple team, bring it to the outside, and work off a screen set by Redennis. There's the bump by Pritchard, and the shot off the mark, and was not touched, was not blocked, the tip by Virgen. So the Commodores will have it back, and they'll have 48 seconds to work with. Which in JV ball sometimes is one possession, and at other times that's like 10 possessions. That's what the wildness, the craziness of JV basketball action. And that's going to be recovered by Higby. She's got plenty of time, still 34 seconds to go. Another block. Yeah, guess who? Pritchard blocked it. Flynn took it away, and she didn't get it. Oh, nice play by Flynn. And I believe that was last touch by Paquette. And we'll have no river with the ball with 25 seconds to go. Oh, and again, they, they're going to have to do some tweaking on their press break. They're actually just on their inbounds play. And Fitzgerald will get called for the foul. They went down to Stapleford, and that's going to be the seventh team foul. And that should be shots coming up for Stapleford, and it should be the one and one. And yeah, that's where she's heading to the free throw line. That stopped the clock with 18 seconds to go. Again, not a lot of free throws tonight. And it is the one and one, so. Oh, I thought she was going to get it. Flynn does. Flynn got tied up. Who else was there? Pritchard. Pritchard tied her up. Would be white basketball. 16 seconds to go. Dan Brackett will take the ball out of bounds. We're heading toward halftime. And 
Uh, oh, big collision between a lot of people and Paquette off the glass. There's Stapleford, no good. Paquette tipped it, tried to go outside, and Pritchard had it, lost it, and that will be no good again. Boy, Virgen's just getting a ton of chances. That was partially blocked from behind. Now, oh, my goodness, thank God the buzzer happened. We're going to have a wild finish, so you got a few seconds to go out, grab a snack, go to the bathroom, and get back with the second half of action, and it's going to be 16-13 for Jens with the lead and JV basketball action on Munger Vision. Bounds. We're just underway here in the third quarter. 16-13 for Jens with the lead. They got the dark blue uniforms on, Mill River and the home whites. This is the JV version of for Jens and Mill River. We'll have the varsity version. At a later date on Peg TV Channel 15. And once again, Tom Leipold, the program director at 15, wants me to remind you, Saturday at 4 o'clock, he loads up the server and he just plays all the sports handed in that week. So nice pass down inside to Flynn. Flynn blocked again. That's got to be Pritchard. Oh, Pritchard's on Oh, Pritchard with a block. And to see Pritchard's on her way to become a player of the game. Let me tell you, we had a sponsor that would donate shirts for player of the game. She'd have one. Off the glass of it. And that all started with Pritchard blocking the shot twice and controlling it on the second block. 16-15 lead down to one for Virgins. See Higby working against Lee. That's close to a five second count. They'll get it down to Flynn. And it's gonna come back to Higby and she'll get to Stapleford. She wants to go around and boy, she got down in deep, kicked the ball back to Flynn. She's inside the free throw line up and in for Flynn. Boy, once you allow them to get the ball that low below the free throw line, usually nothing that good happens for you defensively and it didn't. Dan Brackis will get the ball back to Lee. She worked hard to get open, and Lee will cross over now and work it to the court, center court logo, and that's no doubt about it. That's a kick by Paquette, and that's pretty coordinated. To pick the ball out of midair with your foot, that's pretty awesome. And Dan Brackis over between the scores table and the home bench, set to put the ball into play. Number 11 out there for, for Jens. Now tossing into Lee, and Lee carried the basketball. Now, the only problem I have with that, and I, I don't have a problem with it, it's just they could call that on every play, on every team, on every player, basically on every dribble. At some point, they carry it. It's just, what I always, I don't, I'm not criticizing, what I always found strange is at what juncture was it, and now why did it become a call now? That's a basket, and on the turnover, the ball will go to, the score will go to 20 to 15 now for Jens. Dan Brackus in the lead, and Lee will get caught in a trap and got bailed out actually as Paquette punched the ball out of bounds and that's going to give Mill River a little break there because Lee got into a double team, got into a trap and really didn't have a lot looking positive there. And he'll come back to Lee and she'll be followed up the court by Paquette and Paquette now will back off and Higby will pick her up 25. They go over the top of Dan Brackus, she'll save it in the corner, pick it up and snap the pass back to Lee. This is a three ball for Lee and it's going to be a little bit wide. Pritchard came in and just overran the play, but Pritchard came back and stole the basketball. She's got a ton of blocks. She started a lot of fast breaks, and now she's got the steal. Dan Brackis around the rim and no good. That's going to go out of bounds, and it's going to be blue basketball. So for Jens, with 5.56 to go in the third quarter, same pace as we ended the first half with very up and down the floor. Now, well, not a lot of whistles, no foul shots yet, and... That's Kachupi in the ballgame, number 24. Defensively there for Mill River. She's guarding Higby right now. And they're going to have the steal taken away by Kachupi. Lays the long pass out for Dan Brackis. She'll measure her steps and be too hard off the glass. Oh, and she, she knows it. She knows she was so good about lining her feet up. And then she hammered it off the glass. Higby will get it, fire it, and come up short. Never really had space there. Her own teammate got in her way. Here comes Bennett the other way. Bennett, pass picked off by... Higby came all the way down, and there's a foul. Oh, hey. oh. That, that was a good call. There was no doubt about that. And Stapleford will come out of the basketball game, and that will bring Cohen in the ball game. So they'll have Cohen, number 10, get back in the basketball game. She had a real solid first half of play, Cohen did. And that's the first foul of the second half, and it was on Benick of Mill River. And there goes Cohen, and boy, she wanted to split the defense and just took the bump, and Pritchard came up with the ball, and she'll find Kachupi, and she wants to go long distance to Bennick. She'll chase it down in the corner and saves it from going out of bounds back to Kachupi, and this is Dan Bradkis off the front of the rim, rebound Kachupi, high off the glass, and got it. Oh, nice job by Kachupi. 
20 to 17. Bridgens has the lead. Here comes Higby, and Kachupi came out to contest it. Just about the center court logo. Tipped it away to Pritchard. Pritchard wants to pass it out, and she had it and lost it. Flynn thought about it, pulled it down to Paquette. She'll put it up, and no. Oh, what a spinner. Van Wick had it, and now they'll give it back to Higby, and she'll put it up and leave it short, and the ball will hit the floor, and Pritchard will get it. She wants to toss over the tops, and she will get it to Bennick. Bennick down the sideline behind the back, kind of a little bit, and I'm not sure what they call it, a hold. On Thames, will be on Cohen, the foul will be. That'll be the first team foul on Virgins here in the second half of play. Then Brackett's out of the ball game. Fitzgerald comes to number 20 for Mill River. And that's, wow. I gotta tell you, that was touched in the front court and then she went in the back court. And I'm not sure why that wasn't a call. It's irrelevant. That's a foul. That's Stan Brackett with the big time foul against Delisle. I'm waiting to see if they're calling on the floor. They're calling that on the floor, no shots, okay. Yeah, I thought she's going up for a layup too. I'm sitting on the Bridgen side and they're all talking about it. And There's Higby with the shot and no, long rebound comes down to Redennis, turn, lost it. Van Wick wants to go down inside to Flynn, and coming back was Katrupi, and bodies flying everywhere, and now a whistle will come. And <laughs> I tell you what, it's been an interesting affair tonight. Van Brackis got open and had the pass sent back, and be Katrupi, no, that's Redennis. And Redennis will pick that hot potato up. Now it's Katrupi looking for Fitzgerald in the middle of the floor, and Fitzgerald. Boy, we'll pick it up. She just waited for the girl to lose control again, and the pass coming back to Pritchard, and she is a lefty, and she got the basket. Nice job. 20 to 19, down to one point now with 3.36 to go in the third quarter. Virgen's looking to build the lead back up, and I believe they're gonna call a defensive foul. They'll be side out, but that'll become the third team foul, and we're in that first half. No, River did get to the bonus situation defensively. And Dan Brackens with two fouls will come out. Burden will come back in, number 14. Allie Burden, or Allison Burden. I have to ask her if she prefers Allie or Allison. Knocked down Pritchard, finds Katrupi. Here we go again, wind it up. It comes down, she sidesteps the defense, sets up a three ball and left it short. Blanc, rebound will come back, Katrupi will take it. Sends it off to Burden, she'll take a three ball and use the glass, no good. Ball can be tipped and it'll be controlled by Burden. So Mill River getting some second and third opportunities into Pritchard, I like that option. That's where they should really be looking right now. Pritchard pretty smooth down there in the low post. 21-20, Mill River capturing the lead again. Higby, got the Kachupi and goes out of bounds off from Higby. It'll be Mill River basketball. Yeah, it's going to be Burden in the back court. And I think we have first timeout taken of the second half of play. And we'll come back over and take a look at that Mill River huddle again. And this is going to be a chance to, looks like a full timeout. They're sitting down. Yeah, it's going to be a full timeout. So let me let them find themselves seat wise here. There we go. I'll lock it down and I'll tell you that they have on their roster number 10, Katie Messer. Number 11 is Casey Dambrakis. Amanda Lee is number 12. Allison Burden wears number 14. 15 is Kylie Peterson. <laughs> Marissa Fitzgerald is 20, Melissa Mangan is 21, Taren yeah, Dennis is 23, Haley Kachupi 24, Brandy Bennett 32, Madeline Pritchard 33, Caitlin Hardigan 34, and Lauren Abdelnauer is number 44. I believe I'm saying that correct. If I'm not, believe me, they let me know and I'll work on it. But I'll just reset for you where you are at 2.58 to go in the third quarter, 21-20 Mill River. They had trailed by as many as five points here in the third quarter. They're able to come back and get the lead. Team foul stand at three for Mill River and one on for Jens. For Jens, it's the dark blue uniforms, and you're looking at Mill River with the white tops and the dark blue bottoms. And at times, it's been rock'em, sock'em basketball out there. That was a Mill River timeout. Captain Burden will go back in position, take the ball out of bounds. 
She'll get it to Pritchard and lays it out for Kachupi. She'll make the catch, cup over, and then that's a set play off the timeout. And I'll tell you what, I really believe that's just the way he drew that up, the way it unfolded. That'll be 23-20 now. Mill River will go to a three-point lead. And that got a blocking foul on Paquette. She moved on the screen. And we'll have the ball out of bounds right over near the scorer's table. That's Burden 14. A little break in play here, but I didn't see any new subs come into the basketball game. Katrupi had a pass picked off. Her problem right there was she killed the dribble in the backcourt with nobody guarding her and breaking through his pocket. And oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, body's moving backwards, flying around, sparks going. Oh. They got it into Flynn, then I think she realized, yeah. Where she was too late, because she could have caught and shot, but then that gave Pritchard a chance to get into position. They'll come to the free throw line and Stapleford up and and no. Flynn, go right up with it. There you go. That's what you do. 23-22 for Jens down by two with 2.13 to go third quarter action. I told you this is gonna be a nail biter to the end, and Fitzgerald can't get to it. And again, they're just running people free, not setting screens, and that's what's making it so hard to get the ball in bounds. And, Abdelnauer coming in for Pritchard. I got to tell you, Pritchard just awesome. She might be on the varsity squad before the end of the season. Okay, the coach for yeah. There's a question on possession, and that's what the officials are going to go discuss right now. Okay, so they're going to come back and everything's going to stay the same. Okay. Stapleford will bring the ball into Higby and she'll be working against Verdana. See the screen set right there? No, they want to go down inside. Who hit that? Oh, Burden hit it. Burden a good looking player too. She's had a good ball game out there. And they are easily get the ball and bounce to Podcat with 158 to go Podcat. We'll kick the ball back. I think Stapleford could have caught that cleanly. She would have taken a shot. We got a blocking foul called on one four. I believe Burden called for the foul. And yeah, so they're gonna have no shots, ball out of bounds. That's gonna be the well, I have it as a fourth, but I'll wait till the board team fall into Flynn and boy, again when you catch the ball a foot from the basket on an inbounds pass, usually you're gonna turn that into points. Katrupi will split the defense. Weave her way to the arc. Give it down inside to Abdelnauer. She'll turn, fire short. Rebound down, up, foul. Fitzgerald should be getting two. Yeah, there's the indication from Moose. And two shots. Okay, so it is official. I was just waiting to see what he was calling there. And there's going to be two shots coming up for Marissa Fitzgerald. And geez, I don't remember Miller ever taking a foul shot in that first half. And Fitzgerald will front rim it. She gets a second chance here. It's 24-23 for Jens' rally to come back and take the lead. Like I said, it's gone back and forth. It's just been a dandy tonight. JV basketball action. Tied at 24, and we're going to have number 21 come in for Mill River. It's Mangan, Melissa Mangan. So again, they'll have a free court to work with here up to midcourt. There's no press, and for Jens, Higby, 25, will bring the basketball up, and that's going to be Katrupi, and there's the screen set. And they wheel it down inside, off the glass, battle for Abdenauer, Flynn, Flynn back up, no good, another chance, and they didn't cash in on it. Here comes Burden followed, yeah. Oh my goodness, they called a double dribble. Oh, man. Oh, I got to behave today. I could get hammered if I keep criticizing. Well, I'm not criticizing, I'm just observing. Oh. So a minute 20 to go in the third quarter, and we are, oh, well, they changed the score on me. It was 24 all a minute ago. Now it's 24-22 Mill River. That's interesting. I'll have to go to the board and say it's 24-22 Mill River. I'll have to cut Coach Chadburn over there on the score clock controls. We're nearing the one minute mark. And Higby got inside Mangan, and the ball will go on the floor, and Boy, they save it. I thought, oh, they saved it from going out of bounds. And Higby 
Inside, no, good look, long rebound comes down, Burden will have it, Burden will turn, Burden will bring it right down the sideline, Burden in the front court, nice pass, up and, oh, what a pass to Katrupi, and Katrupi with the catch and the finish. That's the way you run the break. 26-22, Mill River's lead goes to four points with 41 seconds to go. Free throw line, no. Rebound on the arm, should be having shots. Van Wick, number 11, one of the tri-captains, fouled. Yeah, they're gonna send Van Wick to the line. She's getting two shots, clock stopped for 35 seconds to go. That is the second foul on Fitzgerald, and on team, it's five fouls on Mill River as a team now. She's going to get the bounce. I liked her patience before the shot. She really took her time to get relaxed, focus, bend, and rotation. Nice. Just like a clinic right there. Burden will bring it in. Katrupi getting wound up now in the backcourt. We'll toss over the top to Mangan. She'll break the timeline. She's going to work between circles. Gets the ball off to Burden. Three ball. No. A little strong, a little long. Abdul now are back up. No good. There's Fitzgerald. Fouled. But i tell you what, the offensive rebounding certainly has improved here in this second half for Mill River. Yeah, and they're going to send Fitzgerald, who was just one of two at the line, back to the free throw line and two shots. Yep, that's going to be the third team fall. As Delisle picks up her second personal fall. And Fitzgerald got that one. Makes it 27-24. And she got the bounce there too. Now she's three of four from the free throw line. 28-24 Mill Rivers JV squad with the lead in the third quarter over Virgens. And that pass will be controlled by Stapleford and she'll bring the ball back and Mangan will knock it out of bounds. It's intended for Higby. And it'll be taken out of bounds by Stapleford. And they'll get it in. Van Wyck wants to go baseline. And she kind of got too far into the basket on the angle. Stapleford passed a shot up. Higby will take it. And Higby, no good. Had a good look. Just didn't nail it. And Kachupi on the far side will get the basketball. There's the push. There's the buzzer. Mill Rivers, JV squad will head into the fourth quarter. Try to protect a four-point lead. 28-24, Mill River over Virgins on Munger Vision. And what could be the final quarter? Don't forget there's always overtime. Can't. Go home with the way of a winner, and Higby will bring the ball into play, and you see that it's going to be Dan Brackus back out to number 11, playing with the two fouls. They get the ball down inside, and Van Wick and traveled. Going to turn it over on their opening possession, and Burden will take the ball out of bounds, and they'll go back to the full press now. And Virgins had a lot of success pressing early in this basketball game, and Marissa Fitzgerald came back to meet the pass, breaks the timeline, spins away from the pressure, gives it back to Burden. Burden. Was open for a second on the arc, took it down, gave it to Dan Brackus, and she won't get it. Had a good look, nice form on the shot, and the hoop just wouldn't cooperate with her, and we stay at 28-24, Mill River with the lead, and Virgins with the ball, and they're going to kill the dribble top of the arc and go to Cohen. Cohen, a lot of moving, a lot of faking, but not really going anywhere, and that's going to be in the bucket for Higby. So Higby will bring it to within a bucket at 28-26 now. Oh, what a play. What a play by Burton. She threw it off the, the back of the head of the Virgins player. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Richard with the bucket. I don't think I've ever seen that before the game. Jump off. Thank God. She threw the ball and bounced. And the defender had her back to the ball, and it hit her in the head, and came right back to Bird, and she brought it down the floor. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll get it together here. Cohen actually just double dribbled, no call. He must must be still amazed by that imbalance play too. <laughs> Oh, Dan Brackett's missed it. Pritchard had a shot at the rebound, tipped it, couldn't control it, and Flynn's going to be over him. Oh, they didn't call that. Oh. 
<laughs> I gotta tell you, this is really season action for the rats too. Oh, it'll be Paquette taking the ball out of bounds. Bridgen's in the <coughs> blue uniforms and the Rivers JV squad in the white. And Paquette open and no, had a good look. I like the decision making to take the shot. There goes Burden. Breaks through one tackle, gets the ball down to Florida. Mangan, oh, she should have taken it through, yeah. She'll kick the ball back outside and then Brackus will drain it. She'll get it. <laughs> That makes it 32-26 though. Bill Rivers lead up to six with 5.50 to go in the basketball game. <laughs> Flynn looked, oh she had Van Wick open for the longest time. By the time she realized it, the defense kind of shifted to that side because of turnover. Remember, we'll have the ball and Burton will take it out of bounds number 14. And they're gonna go over the top to Dan Brackus. Gets it over the top of Higby and Dan and Brackus will chase it down and give it back, and Burden will penetrate all the way in. Shot was tipped, comes down, and Pritchard will, from her knees, make the catch, have it taken away by Cohen. Cohen looking for an outlet, and slapped away by Burden to Pritchard. Tell you what, Pritchard's got a nice hand. She can catch everything around her to the hole. Yes, he'll get it! Burden will get the bucket, and then he'll make it an eight-point lead for the Minutemen. And we're down to five minutes to go in this basketball game. Oh! Pritchard was looking for block number six right there. You see Higby back up, then Brackus reached in there, and be, uh, see the screen set by Paquette. They'll swing it down inside to Van Wick, and Pritchard got a piece of it, knocked the ball away, recovered by, by Van Wick. She'll bring it back to Cohen. She'll split the defense, and they got called something. They called, they called travel, and it could have, you know, the, the coach for, for Jens, it easily could have been a block, yeah. I think it was the block that would lead to the travel, but with 4.51 to go, Mill River will get a little home cooking and get the basketball. And there's Dan Brackus into the front court and she palmed the basketball, carried it, and it'll go out of bounds. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to go home and watch the tape again on the inbounds play. 4.46 to go in the basketball game in here. This, they're not to a must score, but there's no shot clock. I mean, that's that's not. So it's not an, an, an X number of possessions game right now. Pocket. Oh, it wasn't even tipped. It went out of bounds, and it'll become Mill River basketball. And Mill River will call a timeout, a full timeout. And this will probably be the last time. I'll get to read their roster to you. But this is the JV squad from Mill River for 2007-2008 season, and they have. Katie Messer, number 10. Casey Dan Brackus wears 11. Amanda Lee wears 12. And Allison Burton is 14. Kylie Peterson, 15. Marissa Fitzgerald's number 20. Melissa Mangan is number 21. Taryn Redden is 23. Haley Kachupi wears 24. Brandy Benick is 32. Madeline Pritchard, 33. Caitlin Hardigan is 34. And Lauren Abdenauer is 44. And that is the Mill River JV roster. And again, Peg TV's website is www.pegtv.com. They have a phone number at 747. Everybody has a phone number. Their phone number is 747-0151. And they're located in Building 24 at the House Center. And if you stop in to see them, even if you're lying, tell them that I do a good job and, and, and you know, like watching them sports on Channel 15. So we'll come back. We'll be podcast with the basketball. There she's number five. And she'll bring the ball into play. Jens needing the bucket here pretty quick as the lead's at eight. Higby gets it, and that's Dan Brackus on her defensively. And Burden there to help, and they throw it to the center to Stapleford. And a little give on this side, and Delisle had it around the rim and popped back out. Dan Brackus with the ball will turn, felt the pressure, hooked it to the middle, and now she'll cross the timeline and just get the ball. Oh, she's lobbing it down inside and had it stolen away. And Higby with the catch, up and... Rebound, Delisle can't get it to drop. Rebound will come down, be controlled by Mill River. And we'll have a jump ball. That's Hardigan with the basketball into the basketball game. Also, I missed this earlier, is number 10, Messer. Katie Messer, number 10, into the basketball game for Mill River. And that ball will stay with Virgens at the midway point. Four minutes to go in the contest. This is going to be Cohen. And boy, she turned right into uh, Dan Brack. Is able to get the basketball back. and. They'll go down in the low post. That's Stapleford that turned and 
Cohen open, lost the handle. That threw the shot off. Comes to Paquette. She'll swish it, Paquette. Okay, what it was there? It's just a warning for a delayed game. Boy, Messer was open. They got it back to Dan Brackus. And now Messer number 10 with the basketball. She'll cross over the timeline, push the pass up ahead to Burden. And boy, her pass had some juice on it. And Cohen knocked it out of bounds. And now they're saying it went off from Dan Brackus last. And it'll become Paquette taking the ball out of bounds with number 25, Higby, in the backcourt. Oh, to say a wild one would be an understatement tonight. That, and if that's on Dan Brackus, that'll be her third personal. I'm just waiting for the board to catch up because I missed the numbers flashed by the official. And it is Dan Brackus and it is her third and that's the team's six. So the Knicks follow Mill River commits will send her gens to the line for at least the one-on-one. -on -one. Mike Cohen, she's, she's been a little bit too, too unselfish. She's had some chances to take shots. Oh, nice ball fake, staple for it up and no. Rebound comes down and Hardigan wants to outlet the basketball and lost, it goes to her knees and just to pass out to Dan Brackus. Nice job by Hardigan. Long ball up ahead, Pritchard. Will she dunk it? No, she just went to the layup and Pritchard. I'll tell you what, she's a good looking player out there. She ran down that floor and hustled. 36-28, and that ball tipped away by Mill River and goes to Messer and the ball will be tied up. Arrow will favor the Minutemen. Or do you have a foul? No, I think it's just a tied up basketball. So Dan Brackus will leave the game. I'm trying to see who else leaves the game here. Burden will leave the game. And Messer leaves the game. So three new subs come in for Mill River. Lee being one of them right there, number 12. And Flynn wants to come in for Stapleford for Virgin. So Flynn will get in there, double zero. Kachupi came in and Benick came in for Mill River. And that'll be intended for Kachupi, slapped out of bounds by Virgins and Lee will take it out, number 12, now just on this corner side. Now get it up ahead to Katrupi, and Katrupi, pressure from behind, ball knocked away, rolls all the way across the floor to Pritchard. Great opportunity there that Virgins just didn't jump on that loose basketball, we're down to 2.42 to go. No shot clock in the basketball game, but usually in JV ball, you can't get him to hold the ball anyways, there's a the ball. They got it down to Hardigan. And she took it to the hole and got fouled, and she's gonna be shooting two now. I'm sorry, I keep thinking of that inbounds play. And we've got 30 second timeout. And it's a good chance to remind you that there'll be more Mill River boys and girls basketball action for you on Munger Vision at a future date. Also, CSJ, College of St. Joseph's basketball. They start back up at home on January 9th. And it'll be a, a women starting at 7, at 5.30, men starting at 7.30. So double header down at CSJ. Good basketball teams down there. Get to do a lot of their stuff. and. Uh, Mark Benitaz, the athletic director, has got a, everything running, that high quality down there. Everything's on the up and up, and it's it's good to uh, get down and catch, and catch some college basketball action. And if you do go down and watch CSJ live, you still have to watch on Channel 15 also. So that time out taken by Virgins, and eight point lead, 235 to go, really not insurmountable at all. They just, now they're getting down to where they got to score on each possession they get. At the five minute mark, they didn't have to do that, but now they're kind of getting in that position where when they do get possessions back, they need one, one point, two point here, or three point, they need points. And so, Hardigan at the line, that's where we left off. Okay, each team with 16 fouls, so the next foul by either side will be shots, unless it's a player control foul. And here comes a free throw, a little, little bit strong. I'd have to ask Burden if I could ever get, I can't talk to kids between periods or varsity and JV, but if, if she meant to do that, throw the ball at the back of the kid's head. That will go in, 37-28. And Higby, keeping the dribble alive, keeping the dribble alive, working against Lee, gets to the 
edge of the arc, the elbow, and then there's a the ball down to Cohen, and she's not going to get it to drop. Ball fought for, and it should be blue ball. Goes off from Hardigan out of bounds. Got Higby now will take it out on the baseline on the far side, and they'll set the box formation up and all widen the shots. So you see the break, and they'll get it into Cohen, and Cohen will pivot. Cohen will find the seam. Cohen had it blocked, and she, yeah, I think it was Katrupi who came around and got a hand on it. It could have been Lee, but what happened there was Cohen went to shoot, and the ball, she mishandled the ball on the transfer from one hand to the other, and that threw the rhythm of the shot off and gave the defense a chance to react to it, and that's going to be recovered by Mill River, and they'll restart the offense now. There's the steal. Delisle will bring it inside. No. The rebound will come down to Lee, and she'll cross over, and she carried the basketball. Going to go back for Jens with 157 to go. It's 37, 28 Mill River. So Mill River will call timeout. And I haven't done, you know, I just realized I have not done the for Jens side for you, and I apologize for that, but Better late than never. Double zero is Sam Samantha Flynn. Number five is Liz Paquette. Jen Cohen wears 10. Kathleen Van Wick is number 11. Katie Curler is 14. Anna Jo Smith is 15. Daniela Stapleford, 20. Kendall Newkirk is 22. Hillary Delisle is 23. And Alexa Higby is number 25. That are the that is the visitors from Virgin's JV squad. And I'm sure everybody's got at least two timeouts left. But we're winding her down here with 157 to go in the fourth quarter. And that ball will go out of bounds and it'll be Paquette. We're right there, getting set to bring the ball into play. She calls for the break, they run a stack and it got tipped. It was Lee that tipped it, got it to Hardigan, they go back to Lee. Lee to the timeline travel, yep. Took an extra step and traveled, and that will become a turnover. Now, they're at the point of the game, believe me, where Jens has to capitalize on all these opportunities now, down by nine points. And Higby. Need somebody to come to the ball. We'll get it to Flynn. Flynn from the free throw line. Will she get the bounce? No. And comes down to Cohen. She'll fake underneath and got fouled. It's going to be the one-on-one. -on -one. And I believe Benick, 32, will get the foul called against her. So Cohen... There she is, number 10, Cohen, one of the tri captains for Virgins at the line. And got to have them. They got to nail them. That's two fouls on Benick, seventh on the team. Nope. And Hardigan will get the rebound. And nice job by Katrupi to come back to make herself available for the pass. Katrupi, a little bounce pass on his side to Lee. She wants to go down inside to Pritchard. Pritchard. Had it lost, it actually might have been tipped away from her. And Higby all the way up will get it. Blocked by Lee! Lee came out of nowhere and made the block. They trip up Kachupi, no call. They'll give it to Cohen. There's the shot from Paquette. No. And then Lee got inside there. He got a hand on the ball. Goes out of bounds off from Lee. Stays with Virgens and Paquette. Now will take the ball out of bounds. And they've got the line play set up for Virgens. And well, again, the ball was tipped coming in bounds. And Travel called. Got travel called, and it'll be for Jen's basketball. It's a pod cat right in front of her coach on that side. 110 to go, 70 seconds to go in regulation, 37 28. Higby with Lee against her and gets the ball on this side to Cohen to the hole. No. Rebound, Pocket had it lost. It picked up by Kachupi. She lost it. She's going to stay with for Jens with 57 seconds now left in the fourth quarter. They'll get the ball into play. And boy, I tell you what, Higby's ran a lot of minutes tonight. She's put a lot of time. And get a blocking foul called. I believe he pointed at Benick. It's going to be the one and one. And I'm just trying to see who's going to the line. Hmm, you know what? He called the foul on Virgins. Okay. That's why the coach didn't know what was going on either. And that's going to be the fifth foul on Cohen. She fouled out. And I'll tell you what, good looking player. She, she'll be varsity very shortly. Now one, two, three, four. So they need a fifth player. And so... Jens has 30 seconds to 
bring a player in, and they are going to pick. Well, no, nope. Van Wick coming in. Okay. And they actually have 30 seconds to bring the sub in, and they used all 30 seconds there. Now we're good to go. So Cohen fouled out, and I was as confused as she was on the play. 47 seconds, and Lee will be tied up. It's going to be white basketball, and it'll be taken on this side by Lee, number 12. Right in front of her dad, the guy with the camouflage baseball cap on, Mike Lee. Looking, looking, and let's <laughs> use the back of her head again. The two people will chase it down, launch it, and I told you they don't hold the ball at the JV level and let the clock, and milk the clock down. 30 seconds to go, and that pass will be saved by Podcat deep in the corner here at the Dean Houghton Memorial Gym. Nice catch by Higby, and she passed up the shot, comes back to Podcat. No, rebound came straight down, controlled by Van Wick, and she wants to bring the ball back to Podcat, and this is going to be Higby. Can't get the bounce to happen. Again, Podcat will line it up, and yes, she'll get it. 37-30 with just nine seconds to go. And they gotta get the ball in play. They can't hold it. Now they can hold it and run it down. Two seconds, one second, and the Mill River JV squad will get the win. 37 to 30 over for Jens. Hope you've enjoyed this basketball game as much as I did. I, I don't think anybody could have enjoyed it as much as I did. Get out there, support your student athlete, and I always support Munger Vision.